Thank you, Brother Dalton, for that. Have your Bibles open to the book of 1 Samuel again. Book of 1 Samuel. Sure appreciate Brother Dalton singing. Did you, did you enjoy the music this morning? Touched my heart. If you enjoyed that, come back tonight. We'll have more of it at uh, 6 o'clock p.m. But now open your Bibles to 1 Samuel. I have been trying to work my way through the story of David and Goliath. I'd like to get past it, but I just love it so much. There's so much truth inside this simple, familiar story. You ever find yourself missing the truths in the common stories? I do. David and Goliath often borrowed upon, often borrowed upon, when you need a quick Sunday school lesson for children. What am I teaching this morning? Flip, 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 flip. David and Goliath. If that's not there. Daniel and the lion's den. If we're not careful Christians, my friends, as we get older, we'll say, well, it's just David and Goliath. Listen, David and Goliath, a powerful, powerful, powerful account in the Old Testament. David and Goliath was not the most mismatched battle in the Israeli battle history. There were battles with far greater mismatched odds. This battle just happened to have one big guy. But beyond that, the battle would have been fairly even. There are times when the Israelites were outnumbered by thousands, tens of thousands, and hundreds of thousands. But the Bible dedicated, it dedicated a whole chapter to this particular account of David and Goliath. We looked at two weeks ago what happens when your giant looks too big. Your giant looks too big, you're looking through the wrong end of the binoculars. You're looking at the wrong giant. Today, if we came to the Lord's help, I want to look at another aspect of David and Goliath. If you look in verse 40 of 1 Samuel chapter 17, I believe this particular passage fits in well as we honor teachers, though that was not the intent when I began to study these passages. But I can see some of the correlations. You see, we live in a non-committed society. Do we not? It is harder and harder and harder and more difficult to find people who will just do what they say they will do. And then beyond that, it is harder to find people who will just do something. Number of... Uh, Men in this church own businesses, and they've expressed to me on different occasions that it's hard to find sometimes em employees who will just show up for work. Now, we understand this in society that it seems as if commitment is fleeting. And the things that maybe we were taught and we were raised in, inside of good parents, to show up on time. To, to give your word and, and be true to your word. It's a lost and dying art. Does it not seem that way sometimes or all the time? And yet here in this passage, I find an aspect of commitment that should be a challenge to us. Look in 1 Samuel chapter 17. Beginning in verse number 40, the Bible says, And he, that is David, took his staff in his hand. And chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag which he held, even a scrip. And his sling was in his hand and he drew near to the Philistine. Lord, I thank you for this time this morning. Lord, I'm thankful that we can come to church and worship you. Lord, I pray that you touch us today. Lord, help me as I speak that it would be a help. It would be true to your word. Lord, would you touch our heart? Would you... Convicted this morning, correct us, Lord. I pray that there's folks here who have some needs and some giants that they would listen to your word and the help that it brings. And Lord, I pray that if there's anyone here, whether present or online, that doesn't know you as their Savior, they've never trusted you, that today would be the day that they believe on you and trust you. Lord, thank you for this time. Please help me. In Jesus' name I ask. Amen. The Bible talks about faith. The Bible says that without faith, Hebrews chapter 11, it is impossible to please God. Faith in believing in something that we can't see. Faith putting our trust, our confidence in something that we can't just physically touch. Faith. We're supposed to have faith in God. We can't see God, but we can see the effect of God. We cannot see God, but we can see the power of God. 
Genesis chapter 1 introduces us to God. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Psalm chapter 19, the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows, showeth his handiwork. We cannot see God, but we can see the effect of God. In this particular story of David and Goliath, they could not see God, but they could see the effect of God. When Goliath took a tumble, they knew that it wasn't just little old David. They knew something else was happening. And I love this because of the way God worked. But as I was studying this yet again, this passage, and, and could not get away from it, there's a concept here that I want us to understand that, that faith requires actions. The Bible tells us this in the book of James. Yea, a man may say thou hast faith. And I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. You see, true faith will result in doing something. You see, if I need a job, and I'm going to put my faith that God will provide a job for me, it would not be faith to say, I need a job, so I'm going to stay in bed all day. Right? Faith would also require me to get out of the house and put some resumes in. Trusting God to do his part, but I'm supposed to do my part. In this particular verse I read for you, the Bible says that David now, he already had seen what was going on. He already spoke up to King Saul. He already took a stand. He was fired up. And now, now he was supposed to face Goliath. He goes down, the Bible says that he picked up Five smooth stones. There have been sermons preached on what those five smooth stones meant, and I have no idea why he picked up five. I'll give you a couple thoughts about it. The Bible doesn't tell us why he picked up five. That's why. So if someone says, well, this is why there was four brothers, they, they didn't know. I don't think David knew about the other ones because he just met Goliath when he showed up to campground. All right? So I don't think he knew the other, the other brothers of Goliath. But I believe that David picked up the stones... He was trusting God, but he knew that he had to do something. I brought with me something this morning. I brought with me, I shouldn't even do this, I brought with me a sling. Now they tell me this is the type of sling that David would have used. Shepherd's sling. High quality swing bought from Amazon. Two day prime shipping. I've tried this maybe two or three times. I did not bring stone this morning. My wife's shaking her head. I brought candy. Now, I'm going to try to sling this candy. Now, listen, guard yourself. I have no idea on God's green earth will this candy, where this candy will end up. It may end up my feet behind me or in someone's head, okay? So just be ready. But, but, I, but I have a point to this, okay? So, 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 so don't, don't, don't get lost on me. Because what we do... What we do is we put our faith in God, and then we leave the sling on the ground. We say, God, you've got to work. God, you've got to do something. I'm trusting you. My faith is there. But, but God not only requires our faith, he, re, he often asks us to do something as well. There David was. Ready for me to try this thing? This is not going to end up well. You're praying for me. You're looking for a new pastor tonight, most likely. Oh, man. All right, I'm off. I, I'm not aiming because I don't know where this thing's going to go, all right? And he's slinging this thing around. Oh, boy. <laughs> brother Ash, you want to try it? Come on, Brother Ash, give it a whirl. I'm going to give you a Kit Kat. Now, if he hurts somebody, you look for a new deacon. <laughs> Come on, Brother Ash. I don't have lawsuit insurance. You don't have lawsuit insurance, that's all right. You've got plenty of insurance at the church, right? Brother Goldsworthy, you want to try one here? Come on, there we go. Come on, here we go, here we go. Here we go. Come on, I got one for you. I get you a Reese, Reese's. All right. Don't hit me, please. All right. Michael Moore. Yes, the teacher. Come here. Come here, Michael. I got one more here. You're a teacher. You call, you call on students in your classroom, don't you? Yes, he does. Got one more. You say, Pastor, how many of these did you buy? I don't know. I just ordered them from Amazon. Probably sent me 4,000 of them. You didn't warm up, right? You didn't even watch me. Listen, what, what would your students say if they said that to you? I, didn't even, I didn't even, wasn't even listening, you know. 
All right, so apparently you're supposed to swing it around and let her go. Don't hit me. All right, go ahead, go ahead, Brother Ash. Hey, hey. All right. Go ahead, Brother John. Hey, whoa. You can have it. You can keep it. You can keep that, by the way. You can keep that thing. All right, Michael, the pressure's on now because these guys are pros. <laughs> <laughs> you want to try one more time? Yep, yep. There we go. All right. Give, no, you can, keep, you can keep that sling, by the way. Man. You did a good job. He's a much better golfer than he is a uh, shepherd sling attacker. <laughs> hey, Michael, no offense, but if Goliath was there that day, you might as well just, you know, just say, listen, you got it. <laughs> Well, good, no one died this morning. This is good. Faith requires actions. Faith requires actions. And I want to point out a couple of places in this passage, 1 Samuel chapter 17, before this time, that David had already shown some things. He'd already shown some commitment. If you look back with me, please, in verse number 34, when David was talking to Saul, the Bible says this, And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep. I want to point out this morning, though David acted that day, he had shown something else. He had shown previous commitment. See, David was a shepherd. David was watching his father's sheep. And I believe David was a good shepherd. David didn't wake up one day when he faced Goliath and said, today I'm going to show commitment. David had already shown commitment. He had already shown devotion to what was asked. We, we see that day in and day out, David was tending the sheep. David was the youngest son in the family. I have a younger brother, all right? We always tease our parents about spoiling the younger brother, but it looked like David had the most undesirable job, tending the sheep. But, but it, I don't find in Scripture that David was a complainer. I find that David was out there tending the sheep and doing just a great job. In fact, in fact, as he goes to tell Saul in that verse, there was a lion and there was a bear. And King Saul, I fought them off for these dirty, smelly sheep. Now, we have a few animals at our house. We have some cats. We have a dog or something that's supposed to be a dog. We have chickens, ducks, now some Canadian geese at the pond, and eventually horses. This is not, that's not an amen spot. Okay? Please, stay with me here. I'm, I'm pouring my heart out to you. No. These animals are fine. My wife loves them. The kids like them, and I tolerate them. If something were to come attack the animals, I would have varying responses. Right? If something attacked the chickens, I'd probably go chase it off, or maybe if it warranted, if it was a coyote or something like that, perhaps take a firearm. But if a grizzly bear shows up in the chicken coop, there you go, KFC, buddy. You got them all. Help me here. I'm not going out there to fight with a sling that I can't even barely get halfway across the auditorium. No, no, sir, no, ma'am. Mm -mm. I'm not fighting off that grizzly. Boy, take them all, buddy. Horses are in back. <laughs> Keep going. But David showed previous commitment, didn't he? It's like he said, the scripture tells us, but I believe David knew his responsibility. It's for the sheep. So whatever showed up, I'm supposed to watch these sheep. If there's a lion, if there's a lion, if there's a lion, king of all the creatures, animals, a lion shows up? I can just picture this. This didn't happen, okay, but I can picture this. You know, there's David sitting there possibly playing a, his little harp there, and, and a bear shows up. Huh. Fights off the bear. But then a lion shows up. If you're David, really? A lion? What happened to like just like a, something small like a, like a skunk? Maybe a little wolf, but a lion shows up. Yeah, you can have all lamb chops you want, buddy. They're yours. But no, David showed some commitment, didn't he? He said, you know what? This is what I have to do. Now, David gives a credit to God in that passage. He said, the Lord delivered him to my hand. David didn't take the credit. David knew enough that it wasn't him that did that. But at the same time, God used someone who was committed. If David had turned tail and ran from the bear and had turned tail and ran from the lion, he would have no lion and bear story. 
and he'd also have no Goliath story. You see, our faith requires commitment. Our faith requires actions. And David had shown, before the Goliath showed up, David had shown previous commitment. Moreover, the Bible says, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. And ladies, just because it says man does not let you off the hook, speaking generally. That means we're supposed to be faithful to God and the things of God, and we need faithfulness. We need faithfulness. We sometimes are surrounded by used tos and has-beens. I want to be faithful in the big things, so then be faithful in the small things. You say, well, pastor, the line wasn't small. The bear wasn't small. You're right. But how many days had David sat outside just tending the sheep? The Bible doesn't tell us. It doesn't tell us. Probably a mundane task, mundane job that he could have complained about, but I don't believe he did. I don't find that in the life of David. I don't find that David was a complainer much. We need to show commitment. He showed previous commitment. But the past didn't dictate the future. The past commitment prepared for the future. Look with me at another a few verses down. We were at verse 34. We read this morning at verse 40 where he took his staff and chose him five smooth stones. Because not only did he show previous commitment, but he demonstrated current commitment. You ever met somebody who lives in the past? Everything they talk about is what they used to do. What they used to do for the Lord. How they used to be good at this. How they used to work on a bus route. They used to teach a Sunday school class. They used to sing in the choir. They wear all the badges of the victories of the past. And David, though he mentioned the victories of the past, he demonstrated current commitment. We need Christians. God Looking for Christians who will show commitment today. I read this little quote. It takes 90 gallons of water to baptize a Christian. And nine drops of rain to keep him at home. Yikes. Maybe it's ten. What stops you from being committed to the Lord? What stops me from being committed to the Lord, from being in the place that God has called me to be? Now listen, I love to come to church. I love to worship God at church. I love to be with my friends and fellowship at church. We went through last year a pandemic of COVID-19. Still some effects of that now. Maybe you used to be seen, but now you're not seen. Maybe you used to be able to be counted on, but now we can't count on you. Where are you? What does it stop? What will stop you in your commitment for God? Listen, we, we see it in families sometimes. We have daddies and mamas who are committed for a long time, and then after 30 plus years, they're getting divorced. Where's the commitment to God, a commitment to each other? We need a commitment. Remember when you used to hand out gospel tracts? Remember when you used to go soul winning? Remember when you used to teach that Sunday school class? Remember when you used to serve God? Remember when you used to encourage other people? Where's the current commitment not the badge from the past I've been here a long time at First Baptist Church 19, 20 years not as long as some and a lot longer than others throughout the years every once in a while we have wonderful people here at First Baptist Church I want to challenge you this morning I've heard stories from, from some of you about what you used to do remember the time that we went out and I dressed up like and you'll fill in the blank you reminisce as you sit there. Where's the current commitment? Well, pastor, I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm sorry you're tired. But what do they say? The world is run by tired people? And that's not Christians. That's just normal things they say, right? So if it's out there, maybe the church ought to be run by tired people too. And I'm sorry you're tired. Get some sleep, but let's keep on going. Well, it's time for the young people to do something. I absolutely agree. I think it's time for the young people to do something and for the old people to do something and those in between who are neither young nor old. 
Time for the singles to do something. Time for the married to do something. It's time for everyone to serve God together. Current commitment. You know, in a current sense, God loves us, doesn't he? Currently loves us, right? He didn't just used to love us. He don't just will love us. He loves us right now. He saved us. That affects us currently, does it not? Maybe you got saved a long time ago, and it affects you right now, and it has future consequences as well. So then, therefore, if God loves us currently, and he saves us, and he affects us currently, does he not deserve our current service? The Bible says this, I beseech you, therefore, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. Current commitment. For us, for some of us, it's time to get in the game. I read this interesting thought. No one is impressed with the win-loss record of a referee. I've ref 25 years and I'm 503. No one cares, right? They care about teams and coaches, but not of a referee. It's time to get in the game. Someone said this, it does not take great men to do great things. It just takes consecrated men. It's time to be currently committed. But what I'm trying to say is at times there's going to be giants in your life. There are times there's going to be problems and obstacles. And God will have provided an opportunity to show himself strong. And he may put in your hand a little sling. A sling that doesn't seem like it will do much against a large giant. But a sling in the hand of a committed servant of God can do great things. David swung that sling around, but David wasn't swinging that rock, was he? God was involved. And David, the Bible tells us, did one other thing that I think just boggles my mind. Look in verse 48. David's had the argument now with Goliath, with Saul, with the men, and it came to pass, the Bible says in verse 40 of chapter 17, when the Philistine arose... And came and drew nigh to meet David, that David hastened and ran. Sometimes when we read the scripture, we miss some of these life-changing ideas. Now think about this. Here's little old David against big old ugly lug Goliath. Goliath, staff, armor, Man of war from his youth, the Bible tells us. David, a shepherd. Of course, killed a lion and a bear. Odds are pretty good here with God, with God's help. But David doesn't shirk, doesn't run with his tail between his legs from the giant. He doesn't even walk to Goliath. He doesn't even like, okay, all right, go through what's going to go on here. No, it says he hastened And he ran, he ran toward the largest man he'd ever met in his life who had a a hankering to kill him. He ran toward this guy. Now now just, just think for a moment, if you're David's brother Eliab, who's already upset at your brother. Early in the chapter, Eliab got after David and said, David, I know why you're here. I know the naughtiness of your heart. You just want to be with the big boys, David. You're just come to spy us, try to, try to spend some time in the war. Go back to your little sheep, David. So there's Eliab who's already been judging him. Can you just imagine Eliab while David is now not only gathering stones, but running toward a nine foot six beast of a man? I don't know how your mind works, but sometimes I put myself there. I don't know that it happened this way, but I can just kind of picture this, all right? There's Eliab like, what is he doing? And one of Eliab's buddies, fellow soldiers, dude. Is that your brother? That crazy man, is that your brother? No, no, I've never seen him before in my life. Mm-mm. Nope, 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 uh-uh. No, no, he, he, said, he said you're his brother. Nope, don't know him, uh-uh, no, no. Dude, he's running like a maniac. Oh, wow, he looks crazy, I don't know him. And then he, he's running and, and just flinging this thing around and running, 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 lets it go. He's throwing a rock at that guy. What does he think a rock going to do? Well, I don't know. Like I said, not my brother. Then the rock Hits Goliath and Goliath falls over, right? Now imagine here, now they're standing there and that's not my brother. And Goliath falls over. Oh, that's my brother. Yep, yep, I'm alive. Yep, that's David. That's my brother. That's my brother, David's my brother. Yep, that was the one. I, told him, I taught him how to use that sling, actually. 
just a little guy. I gave, I gave him his first sling. Yep, that was me. David hastened and ran to, a prop, to face a problem. And Christian, friend, it's going to be sometimes you have giants in your life. And you're going to be tempted to be like every other soldier in this story and many people in life who decide, rather than face the problem with God's help, stick their head right in the sand. So you know what? If I ignore it, it will go away. If I pretend it doesn't exist, it doesn't. It reminds me of when you can play hide and seek with a small child. And how do they often play hide and seek? Right? And parents, we humor them, do we not? Oh, where'd James go? Oh, I can't see James. Oh, oh, oh there he is. And, and they somehow in life think that that's the way life really works. There's a giant. No giant, I can't see it. David not only acknowledged the giant, he ran toward the giant. We need Christians who are willing to face, with God's help, the giants in their life. Not just walk, but run by faith. Your life, there's going to be times where a situation will be broken. You see, this battle was broken. It may be your marriage. You may say, Lord, there's a giant in my in my marriage, it's broken. So run and face it with God's help. Run and face it with God's help. Remember, David was not just running because he had nothing better to do. David was not just out there trying to get his steps in for the day so his, his Fitbit would tell him, good job. David was running to see God work that day. God, my marriage is broken, but with your grace, I'm going to run and allow you to fix the problem. God, my, my, my family's broken. God, my, my character may be broken. God, my spirit, I may have some anger that's broken in my life. Lord, there's some giants in my life. Well, but with, with God's grace, I'm going to run and face the problem. You see, God brings real help, real help to broken people. And I'm so glad because I'm a broken person. I'm broken since the day I was born. The Bible says, for all have sinned. Age of six, I put my trust and faith in Jesus Christ, asked him to save me and forgive me from my sins. And that day, Jesus Christ saved me. The Bible says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I got saved that day. But just because I was saved that day did not mean that all my problems were gone. I still have the flesh that lives inside of me just like you do. There's still times I'm broken. And I can't be unbroken just by sticking my head in the sand, just by letting the sling stay on the ground. My faith requires some actions. You may be broken today. You may have some giants in your life. And you may be just at the point where you see the giant, but you're not willing to do anything. You're not willing to run and face it. You're not willing to pick up the sling. But you're pretending that you have faith. If you have true faith... God may require some actions. You may say, listen, go to your word. Find help about it. Find a, another Christian who can help. There's a young girl who was accustomed to traveling, who was unaccustomed to traveling actually, was taking a train ride through the country as the story goes. This young girl, as she was riding the train, looked up ahead and there was a stream up ahead. The way the stream went, she could not see anything but the water, and she was extremely nervous and had some doubts and had some fears. As they drew near to the stream, though, she saw that there was a bridge. The train traveled safely over the bridge. A short while later, there was another stream the bridge, that the train came upon, and as they came close to the stream, again, it looked like just water before the train. And she, this small girl, again, was, was confused and concerned and fearful. But yet again, a bridge appeared. So they got closer to the stream, and the train traveled safely across. Yet one more time, the train was traveling across the countryside. Came across a large river. And from the distance where she sat, all, all she could see was endless water. And again, the fears and concern and, and doubt showed up. And yet again, as the train came close to the river, a bridge appeared and the train went safely over. The story goes about this time this girl sat back, this young girl sat back. The fellow observer, fellow passenger said, well, you're going to be okay. 
The young girl replied this, this way. It'll be okay. I didn't know it, but somebody put bridges all the way for us. My friend, in our life, in our life, God's put bridges all the way for us. We can't always see them, can we? In fact, sometimes we don't see them until we touch them with our first step. But God has made a way of escape. But that victory, to get there, often requires something back here. Pick up the sling. Run toward the giant. You say you have faith. Show me thy faith without thy works. And I'll show you my true faith by my works. It's not me. David said that that lion, that bear, that Goliath, it's not me. It's going to be him. But I want to do my part. Lord, I thank you for loving us. Lord, for your word. Lord, I pray that you would convict us this morning. Lord, help us to see the, the ways that we need to respond to you. I wonder if you're here this morning, you say, Pastor, I have giants in my life. Truth is, my friend, we all have giants at different times in our life. Sometimes it's multiple giants. I wonder if this morning you say, Pastor, would you pray for me? I have giants in my life. I wonder who would say this morning with an upraised hand, would you pray for me? I have giants in my life. God bless you. God bless you. Hands all over. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I have giants. God bless you. Who else, my friend? I wonder with that, he would say, Pastor, not only do I have giants, but this morning, as you were speaking, God was speaking to me. And maybe you've been to a spot in your life, though the giants are there, that you've been trying to exercise faith, but not doing what God has asked you to do. You've never picked up the stones. You're not swinging the sling. When I would say, Pastor, would you pray for me? God touched my heart, and there's something that I'm supposed to be doing. Would you pray that I would do my part? It's only God that can solve the problem, but God touched my heart. Would you pray for me that I would do my part, that I'd have that commitment, those actions? Who would say, that's me this morning, Pastor? Amen, amen. God bless you, God bless you. God bless you, God bless you. God bless you. One of you this morning, you say, Pastor, I've never trusted Jesus Christ as my Savior. I've never asked him to save me from my sins. If I die today, I'm not sure I'd go to heaven. When you pray for the others, would you say a word of prayer for me? What if you're like that this morning? I'll draw no more attention to you than I did anyone else. But it would say, Pastor, I'm not sure I'm saved. Would you pray for me when you pray for the others? Would you slip your hand up for me, slip back down? I see that. Lord, you've seen these hands. Lord, more importantly, you know our heart. Lord, I pray that you'd help these who indicated they have giants in their life, Lord, that you would show yourself strong. Lord, that you would give them the victory. Lord, and those who ask that I pray that they would take the next step, whether it is picking up a stone, swinging the sling, running to face the giant. Lord, I pray that you'd help them to have the courage, the commitment to do what you've asked them to do. Lord, may we be sent to your word now. Bless this invitation in Jesus' name. Amen.